Lovely to meet you, by the way. Hey, hey, uh, hey. Yeah, hey. Um, so if you could just introduce yourself. Start. Yeah, my name is Safraz Manzor and I am going to be the new Chancellor of this university. Lovely. So how does it feel to be the Chancellor of the University of Bedfordshire? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a bit weird because, it, you know, it's my hometown and it's not something that you apply for. Uh, you get asked to do it. So it kind of feels a little bit validating and it feels a little bit surreal. But at the same time, you know, it feels kind of nice to be able to do something which you're kind of bringing something hopefully back to, you know, the town that you come from. Essentially, what does, does that what the role means to you then? Um, it does, to be honest, what it means is kind of up for grabs. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm essentially, it's like a kind of figurehead role. So, you know, I'm here to kind of hopefully tell some people about my journey, my story, maybe give them some ideas about, you know, some advice, maybe give them some inspiration. It's kind of that kind of an idea of a role rather than, you know, an administrative role or having any influence or power. It's kind of more symbolic in that way. Yeah, I, I watched your movie on Friday with my mum um, and I noticed... Is this kind of like the similar vibe, the radio studio and... Oh, no, 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 my God, no. This is like properly nicely done up. We Ours was in Luton Sixth Form College and it was up at the top of uh, one of the towers. And also it wasn't really a radio station because it was all done through wires. Oh, wow. Like they, they called it a radio station, but actually you broadcast and it was wires and then the wires connected up to speakers in the common room. So it was much, much more lo-fi than this. And I'm guessing you don't have any vinyl records here, no? Uh, I mean, there's one there, but... But yeah, so it's not ours was like a large collection of vinyl records. I mean, it was old school, you yeah, yeah, genuinely old school. But it was great. It was really good fun. No, awesome. Um, and obviously in two thousand and seven, greetings from Berry Park. It was adapted into the twenty nineteen film Blinded by the Light. Um, obviously it's based on your childhood, and we touched upon it with the radio station and how you uh, how you grew up in Luton. Um, and what was it like seeing your life brought to the big screen? It must have felt so surreal. I mean, it was completely surreal, but it was also surreal to have an entire film crew in Luton making it, you know? So, like, to be in George Street and having over 100 people and actors and cameras and, and makeup, and they're all there because of the film. I was just thinking, that's crazy. They were all here because of my story. So, yeah, all of that was, was mad. And also what's kind of amazing is that, you know, nearly every day, definitely once a week, I'll get a message from someone around the world who's seen the film for the first time. And they'll say, you know, I'm living in Chile, but your film really touched me. Or I'm in Korea, but your film really... Aff-. And I was thinking, wow, how all these people who, you know, they, they have no connection to Luton. They have no connection to my kind of personal story. But somehow they were touched by the film or the book. And that's kind of to have created something or to be part of something that in some way touched or, create, or, or, or created a reaction from people is really cool. And you had a cameo in the movie as well. I know. Uh, very brief cameo. And what, what was that like? Yeah. I must have brought your younger days back, surely. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like, it's all fun stuff, isn't it? I mean, imagine what it would be like for you. It's, like, it's, it's, it's all good stuff. It's all a bit surreal. And you just got to enjoy the ride while it's happening. In, in the film, you hint at lots of your media routes. We've seen shooting in the radio setup that like we just touched on earlier. And lots of Bruce Springsteen playing. You, might, you made both TV and radio documentaries. What advice would you give to young people such as me who are trying to seek jobs in the media industry? I think the first thing would be to imagine yourself and think, okay, what is, who's the person you'd like to be? Like, where are you, where do you want to go? What's your big dream? That's the first thing. I think the second thing is to have kind of an individual personality where you think, okay, what is different about me compared to other people who might be wanting to do it, you know? So, I kind of started out in a very different world to the people that I'm surrounded by now. And in a way, that's what's helped give me a different kind of personality or a different kind of edge. And so I think trying to work out what is individual, what makes you stand out is is another thing. And then I think the third thing is working out why do you want to do what you'd want to do, you know? So a lot of my work has been about telling stories, but the stories have a point to them. They're about understanding where I come from or trying to make a difference in some way. And so trying to understand why you are chasing the dream you are, I think that's also really important. Um, your recent book, um, They, um, talks about the difference, differences and mutual mistrust between Muslims and non-Muslims. What inspired you to write that book? I mean, to be honest, it was me again trying to do the same thing that I was trying to do with the film, which is to sort of try and 
tell a story that mattered to me that I thought would make some connection. So with that one, it was more last couple of years, there's been so much tension between Muslims and non-Muslims in the news. You see it all the time. And I was just thinking, is there a better story to be told? Is there a story of hope to be told? And if so, why do we not hear that story? And so I kind of started by asking the question, why is there division? And then I started trying to understand that division. Trying to understand that division led me on a journey to try and look at the roots of it, but also to look at the reasons for feeling hopeful. And so looking for those roots, looking for the reasons to feel hopeful, that gave the structure for the book. Are you involved in politics a lot or...? It's not really party politics. I mean, the book's not really political. Mm -hmm. It's kind of more about understanding our society. And so, yeah, politics plays a part in it because different politicians can have different policies that can help shape things for better or worse. But I'm not directly involved in politics because uh, it's... I, I try and... I'm, I don't feel that tribal about it, you know? No, fa fair enough, fair enough. It's, that's not a problem at all. Um, we've established your strong Luton heritage. How do you feel about the bad reputation our town gets? But, yeah, do, do you think that reputation's still there from... I think to some people it is, yeah. And I think that, you know, it's one of those places that it's kind of easy to mock, in a way. Okay. And I think it has got a bit of a reputation. I mean, I don't know how well justified it is, because I don't live here so much now. I mean, I think some of it is probably a bit justified, but I think it's probably overdone. I think there's other places that have got also got problems and they don't get talked about as much. Um, and I think the positive side of things, or the better side of the town, it, it's harder to get that coverage for that so in a way it becomes like only the negative stories get covered you know so i think there's a bit of that as well okay you must obviously you're not far from you were born well not sorry not born but brought up near the ground do you follow the football team much no not really i'm just i'm i've never really been a big football fan i mean we grew up near it when i was very young and then i know about it but i'm not like you know it's not it was never one of my things you know i was always more into cricket for example than football. yeah that is my next question you actually followed tell me if Correct me if I'm incorrect here, but you followed um, the Pakistan Test Series in England in 2006. What was that like? Um, yeah, it was fun. You know, it was fun. It was like, it was quite a good chance to just... Yeah. Do, you, do you ever play now? Not really. I mean, I don't get a chance to so much now with family life and what have you. But no, I really enjoyed it at the time. And yeah, I mean, cricket is something which is just... It just sort of speaks more to how I grew up because we used to play cricket when I was growing up. And, and you know, it was just... And also, to be honest, there's more Pakistanis playing yeah. cricket. So there was... It's partly because of that as well. What did you do in cricket? Did you bat or bowl? I kind of did both. Yeah, yeah, did both. Did you ever, any stage of life, think, oh, I could take this further or... or... Not really, because I wasn't back, you know, it was more of a hobby, really, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. It was nothing I was going to do professionally. That's basically it, really. I don't want to keep you here too long. Yeah, uh, sure. But um, is there anything you want to add or... And I don't know if you can relate to this, but my nana, he's from um, Pakistan. Yeah. And he grew up, his time was tough in Pakistan. He was sleeping on the streets and it was rough. Um, and because of that, you want to kind of... I want to make him proud. Did you have anything like that, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the same sort of bit like my dad, you know, because like my dad died and I kind of want to make sure that the sacrifices that they made weren't pointless. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if somebody works really hard to kind of come to this country... You don't want to be a complete loser because you just think they did all that. Yeah. I want to kind of show that it was worth it. Yeah. So yeah. there's a bit of that, you know, there's to sort of like say, okay, that gamble to come to this country paid off. Would you say this? What, you're, what you've done is throwing yourself out there, which is a gamble to start off with, isn't it? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I am. Mean, it is a gamble, but then you don't get anywhere unless you ask. and You don't get anywhere unless you apply. You know, because I remember when I was like starting out thinking about getting jobs, I was thinking... Everyone who gets a job, they only get it because at some point they saw an application for it or they went for it. If you don't even go for it, you're never going to get it, are you? No. So you kind of have to throw yourself out there a little bit. Otherwise, no one's going to knock on your door and say, oh, we hear that you're interested in X. Do you want to do it? So you kind of have to let the world know that you're interested because otherwise it won't happen. So, you know, sometimes you need a bit of a thick skin to do that. But otherwise, if you don't let yourself be available, it ain't going to happen. Sure, I think that I think that's the main thing, you know. Uh, in terms of ability, would you say you need that as well, or would you say it's more about the self confidence and literally just putting yourself forward for anything? No, you need to have both. But I think ability is good, but self confidence is also good, and you kind of need both because there's lots of people who might be good, but if the people don't know about them, they're never going to happen, are they? Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much for your time. I had a lot of fun. You know, I got to know you and I loved your presentation in there and it was very nice.
Thank you. Great to talk to you as well. No, no problem. Thank you, Safras. Thank you.